Welcome to Riverside Cemetery. I'm Ellen Williams, and today I've presented on behalf of Knoxville Public Library a brief uh, virtual tour that we're going to take a look at some of the monuments that are here at Riverside Cemetery in Knoxville. And we're also going to uh, take a look at some brief details from the lives of some of the people who are buried here. There are uh, seven different places that we'll visit and seven different individuals that represent a wide variety from history and the community, including some veterans. Riverside Cemetery was started in 1887 after Knoxville Borough made an ordinance that there would be no more burials within the borough limits. The cemetery is in Deerfield Township at an, and it includes individuals whose graves may have been moved from both the Quaker burying ground at the corner of Seeley and Main Street and also graves from the Free Church Cemetery which was located on North Water Street in the borough. This image of the 1875 Atlas shows the Union Church or Free Church burying ground, which was on North Water Street, as well as the Quaker burying ground, which was located at the corner of Seeley Street and Main Street. At that time, Seeley Street was known as Cider Street. As we go around Riverside Cemetery, like many cemeteries, we find markers that are large and ornamented and we find markers that are small and plain. We find many markers that are well cared for and some that show the signs of time and weather. Mr. Bessemer drew a sketch of a map of Riverside Cemetery and included graves of veterans that he was aware of through the era of World War I. Mr. Bessemer, who lived in Knoxville, was himself a veteran of the Spanish-American War and biographical information um, and his obituary is uh, adjacent to this image of the map. As this drawing by Mr. Bessemer shortly after World War I shows, the first entrance used was coming in from a road along the Kawaneski River, but that later changed because that bank had been eroded by the river and some floods. And so later the road access in from the east side, which is the current driveway being used is considered the main driveway now in 2022. And so that's where this blue arrow shows on Mr. Bessemer's drawing that we're going to enter the cemetery. And then we were going to take a look at about seven different uh, graves that represent a real variety of people, uh, citizens that have lived here. And it does include some that have military service. One of the first markers that draws your attention when you enter Riverside Cemetery is a large ornate rough hewn cross that's ornamented with vines and flowers carved on it. And it's the monument of the Brewster family. And it is flanked by a number of different footstones for each individual member of the family. Who were the Brewsters? This is a picture of Horace and Abby McNeil Billings Brewster. Abby Brewster was the granddaughter of Silas Billings, our area's first lumber baron. Silas Billings 
had a son named Charles Billings who always maintained a home near Knoxville, even when he moved his family to Elmira, New York. When Abby McNeil Billings married Horace Brewster in California, they returned a short time later to Knoxville. They lived in a variety of different homes in Knoxville, and shortly after 1900, they built uh, a very nice home for themselves, which later became Knoxville Public Library. Abby Billings Brewster and her husband Horace Brewster lived in the building that has later become home to Knoxville Public Library. They had three sons. Two of their sons died young uh, and one of their sons moved north and sold the building after Abby died. So this is an example of some of the details about the Brewster family who rest beneath this monument. A nearby noticeable monument is called an ornamented obelisk. That means it's rising toward the sky in a small, narrow, pointed fashion with something pointing, pointing to the north pointing to the sky. This is the Freeburn family. It's a family plot, and in this case, this stone has details about the family members on the sides of the, each side of the square base of the obelisk. There were several generations of the Freeburn family in Knoxville, starting with Hiram D. Freeburn and Cynthia, his wife. They had a son named Delancey, who was known as D. L. Freeburn. And he, in turn, had a family that included sons. And they had a foundry and machine shop uh, on Main Street in Knoxville, behind what is now known as Billings Park. And they built machinery in the early industrial age after the Civil War and before mass production of assembly line machinery was a practice. This building was built as the Freeburn Foundry uh, sometime later, it was acquired by Morris Rosenberg and Company and used as a tobacco warehouse to wrap cigars, but the Freebirds had built this uh, at some point near the Billings Park for their foundry. is an image of some advertising broadside that the Freeburn Foundry had produced to advertise their various wares that they were making at their foundry. They closed in 1932 during the Depression. This picture shows uh, Mr. Freeburn, his name was Fair Freeburn, and he is on the left in this picture with a group of his singing friends. Sometimes they sang in a trio, sometimes they sang with another man in a quartet. The center man is named Professor Strait, and the man on the right is named Owen Kelts, and they were very popular as both a trio and with their quartet singing for social occasions and performances in Knoxville at the turn of the century. Mr. Freeburn didn't marry. Um, he enjoyed uh, raising livestock on his farm. He loved horses and ponies, and he also wrote poetry for fun. Some of his poems include The Lost Hubbard Squash, which is actually about the railroad, uh, and a poem called The Old Wooden Cradle, 
about his love for his mother and uh, another poem called Christmas Cards. One of the next large markers that you see along this driveway behind the Brewster Monument is the Beach Monument. And this is known as a sarcophagus style of monument. It's very large and rectangular. And again, this is a family monument that's flanked by smaller footstones for the individuals in that family some distance from the main larger stone. Some information more about the Beach family. This is an example of some of the early graves that were first placed in the Free Church graveyard on North Water Street in Knoxville and later moved over to the Riverside location. There were a number of different individuals in the Beach family. And here's some information um, with regard to some of those. One of them had a hotel east of the present post office in the mid 1800s um, and was in a partnership with Mr. Dearman as merchants. Um, and some of them had various businesses. Otis D. Beach had a farm machinery and carriage merchant business in the 1890s and then there was another Beach fellow, uh, Sydney Beach, who was a partner with Lyndon Case in a different kind of uh, retail business. This is an example of one of the Beach individuals' footstones that probably marks the resting place of this individual, and there are several adjacent to the larger monument. On the north side of the driveway in the shade is an example that can be found of only a handful of infant lamb markers that are in Riverside Cemetery. Most every cemetery contains a few of these, and these are examples of profound loss in the loss of a child from an earlier time. As we drive along this driveway to the north side loop of the cemetery, we come across a very faded and tipped early gravestone in the tablet style for a man named Thomas Cummings, who was a Re Revolutionary War soldier. Some information that we have about the Cummings family and their intergenerational residency here in Knoxville. Um, Thomas Cummings was from some sources came from Massachusetts and may have been involved in the Revolutionary War. He may have played a fife during the war. Um, and some of his descendants, among them was Daniel Cummings, and he donated this free acre uh, for the cemetery to begin before Riverside Cemetery was established. But he may have been the one who donated the first acre of ground for the cemetery to be located at the Riverside Place. Um, they were involved in local affairs and in local government. Um, and the simple flagstone is tipping in its base. As you continue to drive around the perimeter driveway of the cemetery, you will come to a grave that's marked by both an American flag on one side and a Canadian flag on the other side. And this is in honor of Sergeant Albert Andrew Chantre, 
who was born in the state of Georgia and grew up here in Knoxville in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Avi Buffard, who had Buffard's greenhouse. He may have been a Canadian citizen. Um, he became a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1941 after he graduated from law school. Albert Chantre was a graduate of Knoxville High School in the class of 1935, and the paper later printed some information uh, at the time of his death. Um, so he died as uh, killed in action. As you continue around the driveway, Heading in a south direction after the Chantre grave, you'll see a marker that's very close to the driveway and it has no military flag next to it. Um, this is the grave of Dr. Clement Lee White, who served as attached to the British Friends Ambulance Unit. He did not bear arms, but he served in the Allied cause uh, as a physician and a driver uh, behind enemy lines. Dr. White was born in Knoxville and his father was a doctor here um, briefly during the 1890s. Um, so Dr. White may have not had a lot of connections uh, reaching back to our town um, he served as a conscientious objector attached to the British-based Friends Ambulance Unit, uh, and they served a very dangerous mission of truck convoys and supplies into China during the Japanese occupation of China. And this was a very dangerous route over the mountains, carrying supplies into the inland China. Dr. White died as a result of an accident in the normal course of his work and his remains are in China. So the marker here is in honor of his connection to Knoxville. Knoxville Public Library would like to thank you for joining us for just a brief uh, snapshot of the many individuals, monuments, and interesting stories uh, of people who lie and rest at Riverside. If you have information or you are seeking information about someone that you believe may be at Riverside or family history, Please feel free to reach out to Knoxville Public Library for assistance with that. We do have some materials. We may be able to help you with that, um, either by telephone or social media, uh, email, uh, or inquiry with the library. Thank you, and we hope that you have a nice Memorial Day. <music>